You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. My name is Mike and this, this is my favorite ink to get in cartridges. And this is what I use in a cartridge pen almost all the time, unless it's, uh, I don't know, something that came with a pen or something like that, maybe. But if I have a cartridge in a pen, it's probably Diamine Burgundy Royale, which is part of their 150 years of Diamine inks, which is wild, 150 years. And this ink is all awesome. It's one of the brands that I'm like, yeah, start with Diamine. It's a great place to begin. You're not going to be sad. And this is what goes in all of my pens that take cartridges almost exclusively. So uh, I got this, I think, from Cult Pens, maybe. Uh, where it was like eight, it's like less than nine bucks for 20 cartridges, which is quite a lot. Uh, it's a lot of little carts and they hold a fair amount. These are standard international cartridges. So they fit in most pens, although not things like Platinum's, Lamy's, uh, Sailor's or Pilot's. Now the Japanese brands tend to have their own cartridges, but most of the rest of them that you'll find out there will be able to take these. So standard international cartridges, very nice little cart. So, uh, I recommend these really kind of without reservation. They're excellent. So here's what they look like on some paper. Uh, also you can find them in 40 mil bottles for 15 bucks or, uh, 10 bucks or nine ish for 20 cartridges in the US. And then um, for the bot, oh wow, the bottle is 887 at Cult Pens. Man, Diamine is so inexpensive overseas, but you know, you, you, you find what you can get, you know? So this is uh, Diamine Burgundy Royale here on this paper. And you can see it is a beautiful whiny red right there with just a bit of sheen occasionally. You will see some sheen from some nibs and not necessarily from others. So here I have this in two pens. First up is this one. This is a little Pilot Vortex. I picked this up at a pen show recently. It's a weird little Pilot pocket pen that takes a standard international converter and has quite a fine nib. Uh, with this fine nib, uh, up here I say mild bleed on the 20 pound. You're not getting mild bleed from the from the fine nib. It's just, it's too fine to do any of that with. And also I have it in this pen. This is one of my show design pocket sixes this one is in brass with the hand hammered finish this is like one of the first hand hammered ones from that first series he did uh and they're not actually hammered it's dremeled out over and over and over again for a long time so pretty darn cool uh i love this pen and it has a medium yovo nib in there also check out this section how cool is that it doesn't match the pen, but like, I think it looks, I think it looks pretty rad anyway. So I've had it in there for a bit and sometimes I'll just trade cartridges from one pen to another. If I get tired of writing with one, I'll just pop that cartridge in something else and away you go. So, uh, this one, a little bit of shading, a little bit of sheen, a little bit of bleed on the 20 pound, as I said, flow perfect in every pen I've had it in from, uh, really fine nibs up to, as we'll see, uh, like 1.1 stubs and everything in between. It works in everything I've put it in. It's great. Um, this is, as I say here, my favorite cartridge. Here it is. You can see the uh, the little tiny fine nib. And that fine nib is much finer than the medium. I mean, check those two out next to each other. It's kind of wild. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our water drop test. And then we'll uh, look at it on some other papers. Look at it next to some other inks. There we go. We're using our fancy pipetter instead of a uh, syringe because I kind of can't find my syringe at the moment. Okay, let's let this swirl around. Scoonch it a bit. This Nebula note, uh, Nebula casual note paper is um, what I'm probably going to be replacing my Rhodia for with for reviews. I, uh, I like it quite a lot. It holds up to water tests. It holds up to all kinds of different inks and it's very consistent. You can find this over here at nebulanote.com uh, or wherever they sell cult pens, uh, cult pens, wherever they sell Colorverse inks because I believe they come from the same place. So... You will get those together. This is a very good notebook and not very expensive. All right, no real water resistance. All that red came up here off, came up off the paper here. There is, however, a really nice, like gray, uh, the total grid and writing left behind. So, like, is it water resistant? I'm gonna say kind of yes, but not as a as a red. It's water resistant as like a pencily gray. How neat is that? That's some good. That's some good action right there. Here's a chromatography, and uh, if I had bothered to look at this first, I wouldn't have been so surprised that it left behind that gray, because wow, look at that. Look at that! That gray stuck 
to this chromatography just like it stuck here and then the reds and a uh, little bit of uh, magenta here uh, went up the page but uh, this that pencil gray is hiding in there doing a great job of sticking around if you pour water on your work or if you're doing like an ink wash or something you want to do something weird and artsy with it you'll get that little bit of gray left behind that's kind of neat i think that'll be really interesting all right here it is on our staples 20 pound 30 percent recycled copy paper this is from that medium nib and you see there is a little bit of feathering uh, there is going to be a little bit of bleed on the other side, but uh, that is a fairly wet nib there and this is really bottom tier paper. So a little bit of bleed through, not much, pretty much pretty average to low, I would say for this. And like I said, with the fine nib, which I didn't do a writing sample here uh, with, like you're just not gonna have those problems. This is just a wider and slightly wetter nib. So not perfect on copy paper, but you know, what is? Next up, we have here some Mormon croaky paper. I love this paper. This stuff is very good. Uh, croaky paper is a nice white paper. It is excellent for fountain pens and all kinds of other media. It's made for sketching and all that. And this ink looks fantastic on this paper. Paper. No, uh, no bleed through or anything like that. This paper really holds up well. And there you go. You can see the uh, the shading in here, the occasional little glints of sheen where there's extra ink on the page. Not much sheen, but every once in a while you catch it. But yeah, gorgeous ink. Really, really like it. And this croaky paper is definitely worth checking out if you haven't yet. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for that. And here we have Tomoe River. We had to go back a little bit because, look, sometimes I just use these cartridges and I know that if it's a cartridge, it's this because that's really mostly all I use. So I don't always note it down. Uh, I did happen to note... Um, this one, this is a Gravitas pocket pen, and I didn't love this pen, and so I took the I took the cartridge out and put it in that shown. So, uh, but this is a 1.1 stub from Yovo, and you can see here it looks gorgeous from that stub, just like it does from the medium or the uh, the real fine nib. Uh, it just looks good in everything I use it in. So, it's a it's a banger of an ink, I tell you. It's why it's my favorite cartridge. And then here we have uh, there's a Diplomat Magnum that I used it in. Right there, again, looks great, great flow. That's a medium nib. It's like a finer side medium, I would say, on those Magnums, but worked great in there. And then, what's this other one? Oh yeah, I also did the uh, the Gravitas. Gravitas, right there. Looks pretty good. Uh, I think it looks a little bit pale and a little bit washed out, perhaps, on this, because that, uh, that nib is just kind of spreading it out more. But uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at a bunch of colors like this. There's your Burgundy Royale. This is, of course, on a Color Ring card. You can find those at the link in the description. Uh, this is cartridges, it's Burgundy Royale, of course, and you'll see uh, just a little bit of sheen at the edges. Also like a little scraped right there. I don't know what that's about, but whatever. Things happen. Uh, then we have here Levenger Pomegranate, which is not a very common ink. I'm not, I don't think they make it anymore, but Levenger Pomegranate was a really beautiful burgundy with a nice amount of uh, sheen there. Might have been one of my first sheening inks, honestly. And then we have here uh, Kobe number no. six Bordeaux, which is a bit lighter and maybe a little bit on the yellower side, perhaps. I think it's just a little bit lighter than Burgundy Royale. Then we have here uh, Diatrimentus Bordeaux Red, which I think is too red. It's not quite the same, but uh, it's another wine color and then uh, let's go ahead and just stack these and then here Franklin Christoph Sweet Maroon which is one of my favorite of the Franklin Christoph line it's definitely lighter than Burgundy Royale but Sweet Maroon is a, a really nice shader and I think uh, you know I wanted to show it alongside then we have Pannonia's Mousse Rouge which is young wine, which is kind of close. It's a little bit lighter perhaps than Burgundy Royale, but this one I had to squeeze out of a cartridge. So uh, there's probably a little extra ink over here, but this part looks a lot like this. So yeah, pretty close to uh, Mousse Farouche. And then we've got uh, Taisho Roman, classy Burgundy, which underneath all this sheen does look kind of like this. I think if we look here at the edges, of Taisho Roman's classy burgundy and we look at them next to Burgundy Royale they are really pretty darn close just way more sheen so if you're like I want this color but I also want sheen go for classy burgundy this is pretty cool uh, I haven't gotten to use this as much as I would like but I do have it in a pen and I have been enjoying it and now lastly two inks that I picked up just for this review so you're welcome firstly Diamine Oxblood which I reviewed way back in like 
I don't know, 2011 or something like that, uh, 2012, something in that nature. And then I like used up the sample and never bought a bottle. And I don't know why, because it's a gorgeous bloody red. And then right underneath that, Dimine Writer's Blood, which I've just picked up and don't have in a pen yet. But uh, folks asked me how this looked uh, like these, uh, you know, compared to these colors. And let me tell you what, it is perfectly in the middle. So if you're like, I don't know, Ox Blood, a little too bloody red for me. If you're like, I don't know, Writer's Blood, a little bit too dark, almost brownish, too dried blood looking. Burgundy Royale, right in the middle of these two colors. It's just like directly smack dab in the middle. And that's kind of darn cool. All right. So check out Diamine's Burgundy Royale wherever you get Diamine ink, whether it is here or across the pond in the UK. It is cheaper in the UK, but, you know, support your local pen store if and you can, especially when things are, you know, this inexpensive. So um, check out Burgundy Royale. It's great. I can't say enough nice things about it. And uh, until next time, peace out.